what is up guys welcome back to my channel today's video is going to be explicitly different today i'm going to be showing you how you can create a document number using al language yes this might sound so simple and explicit but right now i'm going to be showing you there are tons of different method or different ways to create a document number using just al language see what I'm trying to tell you is you're trying to automate a certain process, but yet you want to create it using the code instead of using the front end. So there are different ways at which we can achieve this. So let's get into this tutorial. All right, so I'm going to be going to uh, my Visual Studio, and this is where we stopped on our last tutorial. So let's look at it. So I'm going to be clicking on Control J, so i can hide my terminal and i'm going to be pressing the windows key so that i can hide the overall so right now our concern is we want to create okay we are in a specific different project so i need to explicitly move out of this and move to our api business central that is where we stopped on this youtube channel so in case you are new to this channel my name is Oyibo Ali Aziz Adekunle. i'm a technical consultant and i provide videos on technical and functional um, roles in business central i also provide other videos in web related projects like the web development node.js javascript css just name it so you can drop a comment below if you like this specific video or you want a specific request just drop a comment below and then state this specific request that you are needing without wasting much time so let's get into today's video now if you have been following this specific video series so you should know that we already have some basic configurations so uh with this specific configuration that we have had at hand, I don't think this would be explicitly okay for us to go with this demonstration. So we need to create a specific table. Today, I'm going to be creating a folder called table. And within this table, we are going to be creating our own table. So I'm creating um, a new folder. So I'm naming this a table, right? So within this table, I'm going to be creating a file. So I can just name name this, um, let's see, uh, content. Uh, if I can still spell dot .l, right? So within this content, we are going to be creating a bonus frame for a table. So let's say TT, so which is a shortcut for table. So I'm going to be using this snippet. I'm pretty sure I should be able to have 5600, right? So I'm going to be saying this would be named, oh, excuse me. So I could name this content. What do you think? All right, so I'm naming this content and then I'm going to be creating some fields. So the first field automatically is going to be now. So I want to simulate a realistic process exactly that can occur while working with AL. So if you're familiar with working with document processes, you should be familiar with seeing something like a an error and also a line so we are going to be expressively working with something like this so before i even furthermore i think i have something on the fire and i need to post this specific video and continue later thank you all right so we have this and i have to say so we're going to be creating a content and we are going to be saying this is a content header right 
and within this content header we're going to be having a basic information that the header could take like the name the person the dates and whatever so within the line we are going to also accommodate some certain set of information for now the information is not going to make sense for us but this should actually take you through a process like this all right so i'm going to be saying this should be the document or just the number i can say this is a this is an noo right so instead of integer i can make this a code right so this will be a code of into um code of 20 lengths right so this is the document id for this specific document so what can we have or again we can have something like let's say t field tf for short so we take the snippet and we say this is two and i can also say this is uh what should we say document description right so document description should be a text so we don't want them to take character more than 100 right so we can also use the square array and say a total length of 100 mm? so i do not want to really waste our time so i i can just do the very last one so i can say t field right so the very last one is the index of three and the field name would be the customer name let's say the customer name right so customer if i can spell name right this would be a text i mean that is okay for a name so i can say mm, let's see 100 your name should not exceed 100 right so you can see below these keys so i want to assign primary keys so these are the keys that i can easily use to access this specific document but obviously right now we have no which is the primary key this is the document number so it's okay for me to see i can easily access this document by its document number right uh, doesn't mean i can access it by the document description but these are not the primary key do you understand so if you're familiar with the database you know primary key are usually essential for a database so this enables me to easily access a data or retrieve a data right so i'm done with the content header so i also want to work with the content line all right as you can already imagine so i'm going to create a folder and i'm going to say this is a content line dot al right so within this i'm also going to just copy this and basically paste it here and then collapse this specific page so what i need to do here is to say instead of 600 i can say 601 and i can also see a content line right this makes more sense and specific all right so um i could see instead of no no it's my cause confusion because this is your first time of dealing with a document type of program in al so i can easily see this is a document number this makes more sense so i could have the same thing document description the customer name i i do not think i need this i could see I could just say maybe document type. Uh, I do not want to extend the functionality of this specific. So um, if you have worked with anything that has to do with a line, maybe a sales line, a purchase line, you'd see it is a database that owns multiple value for a specific database yeah that, that might sound strange right now but this is essentially what it means we have a specific 
content header and the document number is one two three right so we are working with a document called one two three so within this document we selected multiple values or multiple options let's say first choice of your university second choice third choice fourth choice you are able to explicitly define these different choices that you want as um as an as as an option for a university that you can opt in to school within if it doesn't make sense but just follow this process it will make sense after all so um i can there's there is something that can allow us to explicitly split the same document number into multiple values. Just look at, look at it as like an array of values. Get me? So with this array, the array has a variable called names. Within these names, so far these names are my names. So I can explicitly define my different names that I have, but this would always represent me as as is. <clears throat> so that's basically the example I can narrate right now. So we need to define a field called integer, an integer field three. So I can say usually from business central they call it line excuse me oh goodness they <laughs> they call it nine number <clears throat> and it is usually integer and some people misinterpret this specific and they, they give it some attributes like auto in auto incremented right auto incremented and they set it to true and i would say for sure you do not need to define this right so if you follow my example this should work well and you should just try to mimic and then remove some processes to understand how this basically works right so basically from the line we have document number and description and also the line number so because we are working with an array of values so we said it's okay for us to define what we call a line number so we can differentiate different array index value from overall variable all right so it's necessary for me also to give a primary key accordingly so the first primary key i can note from here is what is most essential to this document this is a document number right so i can see document number document description would this be okay for me to use as i do not think so because i can have the same document description for different document number right so I can also say line number should also be unique because I want to be able to differentiate different index, right? Right, so I can say line number, right? So my primary key for the line now is I have a document number and a line number. So I know for sure if I want to access this data easily, I can access it by the line number or also the document number. Moreover, I can also access it by description, document description, but I can have different descriptions that are of the same type, you understand? So that is why I can choose a primary key, something unique to this specific table, right? So I can save these and come back to my file structure and create what we call a page, right? A page folder. So I can see page, so within this page i can create now i can create a document type so i can create this and i can see youtube videos youtube videos are, are based on content right so i can see youtube videos 
dot al right so within this i can collapse this and say t page i'm feeling sleepy already so i can say t page now this page i'm pretty sure i do not have five six zero zero three right so i can say this is a studio right so i can give the table source as um other table content content header <clears throat> right so within this group i can remove all of these and click right behind this opening curly uh, brace and click on this globe and say add multiple fields so i can say for this presentation i want to add the document number i want to add the customer name and i also want to add the document description i can say okay so automatically this populates the fields the necessary fields needed all right so after this group or this area in particular i can control click and see what else can i have i can see i can have a chat part a q group a field a fixed a grid a group a label and a part so i'm more interested in the parts so i'm going to be having a prerequisite for this part so i quickly need to navigate back to my folder structure and go to creating a new folder called um, a list part right so within this list part i can create a page for my content line right we have successfully created a page for our content header so we shouldn't be biased to creating a content line right so i can come under the new file and say content sub form is usually called a sub form because it's a page so those are like a specific sequence i can also take you through why the naming conventions are like that because there are some places you call a singular and a plural so just take for instance is a plural for a line is a sub form just take it that way so i can easily collapse this and say t page right so but but for this t page i'm going to be using a list page right so i'm pretty sure we do not have 5700 and i can say this is this content sub form i can also say this is a content line right content line so most especially i need if if you have forgotten what to use you can control space so you can have this suggestion so i know i need an auto split key equals true I can also control space and see the options available for me. So I can see I need a delay insert equals true. So I can also control space if there are any order that I have not included at the time being. So I can see delete allowed, extensible, insert allowed. I can automatically insert allowed is true except otherwise so i can see multiple new lines so i can say it was true right so the most essential part is for the page type for a sub form 
I also want to make it a list part, right? So basically, this is fine for me if you ask me, and I can also relate this. And the only thing I want to see here is the document description because the document number is the primary key, it should be autom automated line number automated also so i can see a document description and then i say okay so right i'm going to go back to the line table It's essential for me to link this line to the header so the way to do this is to say table relates equals so i can say content Oh shit. Content header dot. So because I want this document number to be equal to the number, the document number for the header. So I say, yes, this document number, I want it to be exactly the content header number, right? This is all I need to do, right? So I can go back to my YouTube videos. Let's see why we have an error. So here we can now explicitly say we want to add our subform. So our subform is called content. Okay, so we're going to have some issues here. So let's go back to our subform. We have some error. So I'm going to remove this fat box, right? Okay, so now we don't have any error. So I can come back to the part and say I want to add my con once again content. So I can say the name is content subform, right? Alright, so I can save this. So I'm basically having some error. We say the name content is an area type. So I can see contents. So I'm not using a reserved name, right? So these are various ways to check into your errors and navigate throughout to solve them. Alright, so I have this part, right? So there are some other attributes I can control space and see what exactly I need. So I'm pretty sure that I need something that links both the header to the foot uh, to the line. So I know for sure I need something that up, updates whatever updates has been done within the line or the header. So there are different options. We have boots or parts, so I want to use boots. If the line is what gets updated, please update it. If it's the header, please update it. Right now, I want to link sub link, sub page link. I want to link it. I want to link the both of them together. Where, right? I want to link them together where documents sorry i want to leave them together with documents number from the line you can see subform is the page for this content line right so i want to link when this document line is equals to the header line so the header line will be accessed by saying field and Oh, right so this is basically what you need to do here you could also go and say application area equals basic suits because you don't want everybody to be able to access access this right 
So basically, this is what we need to do. We can also go further to see um, what's it called. Um, we can give a description. I see what do they call it. So we can give a caption called. content sub form so this is what we're going to be seeing and basically this is it so i'm going to be creating a part two for this video if you enjoyed this video so far do subscribe we're going to continue from this specific page and then we're going to see the future of what we have to produce so if you are new to this this channel, please do subscribe, like, share this video. I give unreasonable content. Trust me, I give you content that people don't give you. So do subscribe. My goal for this year is to have multiple of what we had last year. We had 700 subscriber last year, and we only have one subscriber this year. And we are hoping to get another 700 this year. Thank you for watching, and stay tuned for the part two of this specific video. Thank you.